Let's talk about Nico. The Nico mid-scope update is on the PBE, attempting to breathe new life into a simple burst mage who hasn't quite lived up to her deception fantasy, but who has lived up to the chameleon fantasy given her extreme role and item diversity, at least in casual play. As usual, my community got together to test this new version of Nico, but since we don't usually cover mid-scopes, we tried a different format with a fewer amount of raw games played. In this video, we're going to be going over the new Nico's abilities, purpose and playstyle, deception tactics, and runes and itemization relative to the old Nico. This means we aren't going as much in depth as we fully expect that most existing Nico resources will remain valid, but we expect that this video should remain useful if you have a baseline understanding of Nico's kit. Nico's Q is practically unchanged. It remains an area-targeted projectile that deals damage, then blooms again if it kills an enemy or strikes a champion or large monster. The only new property is that each bloom now deals additional damage to jungle monsters. The passive component of her W is also barely changed. The empowered auto attack now deals bonus damage to monsters. However, the functionality of her clone has been expanded. Nico's clone can now be fully controlled by recasting W, identical to all existing pet micro. This means that we'll have to get used to the new casting paradigm. We actually have to target the clone's exact intended position rather than just choosing a direction, which will disorient you at first. The clone still takes the shape of whatever Nico's transformed into and is still fully targetable, but it will now also copy the animations of your Q, E, emotes, and recall, and it cannot naturally fade away until that animation is complete. This means it's now possible to set up a recalling clone that lasts for up to 11 seconds, acting as either a ward or a body to block skill shots. Nico's E is completely unchanged aside from a damage adjustment that we wouldn't even consider meaningful if it appeared in a regular patch note. Keep in mind that if E strikes a target, all subsequent targets are rooted for a longer duration. Beyond that, there's not much to say. Nico's R has been heavily boosted in utility, but in exchange, it's lost a lot of damage as well as its shield. Now when Nico leaps into the air, all enemies within its range are immediately knocked up. In other words, it's now impossible to simply leave Nico's R range after she's rooted herself, which is a game changer for the reliability of the spell. If Nico is disguised and is hiding the wind up from her enemies, there's no longer a period in which the enemies can react with flash after the spell is revealed. The loss of the shield is only really felt in tower dives and when defending yourself from a heavily mobile champion. The loss of damage is really only felt in the late game. The most drastically changed part of Nico's kit is her passive. Not only are Nico's disguises harder to break, but she is now capable of transforming into most non-champion entities. If Nico stands near a non-epic monster, a minion, a trap, a ward, or a plant for two seconds, she stores their Shoma and becomes capable of transforming into them. Nico can only store the Shoma of one entity at a time and can discard that Shoma by clicking on this X, but do note that she's still capable of freely transforming into any of her allied champions without having to charge up. Nico is no longer forced out of her disguise by any instance of damage. Instead, she must either be CC'd, or the disguised self must run out of HP. Of course, she still loses her disguise if she uses a damaging ability, summoner spell, or item active. If Nico loses her disguise for any reason other than manually cancelling it, her passive will go on cooldown, but that cooldown is now always only 6 seconds. Finally, Nico still inherits many properties from her disguised unit, including base movement speed, attack range, base attack speed and ratio, auto attack quality, and size, but she will no longer inherit base movement speed or attack speed values that are greater than her own. One of the major problems with Nico before the mid-scope was that she experienced probably the most extreme mid-game transition of any champion in the game. Early game Nico is a heavy lane bully. She's supposed to use her very high base damage to combo you out of lane, she skirmishes well with her teammates, and she can reliably generate a snowball. But as soon as the laning phase ended, she was stuck with a very limited set of tools. Her binary combo and short range became a detriment. Her lack of mobility meant she struggled to find effective flanks to counteract her range issues. Much like Kennen, TP helped, but her enemies had a huge opportunity to evade her ultimate, even on those flank angles. Nico actually did have a very real niche within bait and punish compositions, but those are usually not very good within solo queue and are situational within theoretical play. It's weird that an extremely aggressive champion became so abruptly and purely defensive 15 minutes into the game. I used to liken her to Mage Alawi. In fairness, I actually think that mid-game transition worked out favorably for Nico's support. She's in concept similar to Zyra, a mage you'd lock in primarily in defense of your ADC because you want some damage supplement. She was great protection against divers and a very strong laner against melee supports. But it's not always fun when a champion fills only a very narrow niche. Fortunately, it would appear that the new Nico breaks the extremity of this transition. 
The new Nico has a fundamentally similar purpose. She is still primarily a mid-range burst mage who starts as a snowball-dependent lane bully, but she no longer abruptly becomes only a defensive anti-dive champion. Thanks to the increased reliability of her ultimate and her expanded deception tools, she now scales into a playmaker who bolsters her snowball by forcing her enemies to approach setups more slowly, exerting very similar pressure to that of a stealth champion. Her full transition point occurs much later, beyond 30 minutes, where, assuming she's not absurdly far ahead, her solo all-in damage is no longer threatening and she must treat herself more as a utility champion. Don't hoard resources for yourself, and don't trust a Nico to carry the endgame. She's supposed to share the snowball with her teammates, similar to an Ari. If we want to unlock this champion's full potential, we need to be aware of our set of deception tactics. Everything based around champion transformation still exists. You can still send a clone of your allies over vision to feed bad info. You can still bluff lane ganks or numbers advantage. You can still charge forwards beside a clone to force enemies to guess which is channeling the ultimate. All of these tricks were available to the old Nico, but so much has become available with non-champion transformations. The core tactic is to gank from within the minion wave. Enemies will quickly learn that they have to count the number of incoming minions if a Nico is in the game, but it's easy for them to lose track if you're approaching a stacked wave. Posing as a plant in a real location can catch people, especially if it's a blast cone since it's less common to break those on sight. It's expensive on time to set up a trap posing as an enemy jungle camp, and it's not hard to detect unless Nico is so fed that she doesn't need reinforcements waiting behind her. But if she expects an invade, posing as your ally's jungle camp is consistent. Keep in mind, you really shouldn't be setting solo traps with the intention to kill someone 100 to 0, and your best traps are set while spending a tempo advantage. Play off your teammates. If Nico establishes a pattern of posing as control wards, she starts to exert a global protection buff onto her wards as enemies will need to slow down their vision removal. Sending a clone of yourself onto vision while disguising as a ward can trick enemies into thinking you're no longer in the area. Using your clone's recall can cheat out advantages. It will be hard to fool higher skilled players into thinking you've recalled by having them watch a clone complete a base, but if you've established a pattern of doing this, it's possible to trick enemies into thinking you're still on the map while you've taken a real recall. And this is possibly just the tip of the iceberg. You can get so creative with this passive. If Nico has farming responsibilities, then the time she can commit to setting a trap is heavily reduced. Playing with these transformations is genuinely so much fun, but sometimes it's better to play normal League of Legends. Don't sacrifice a good play in favor of a funny play. The last major consideration of this mid-scope is Nico Jungle. I do genuinely think it works. The clear is supersonic, the ganks are great, the 2v2 skirmishing is great, the objective DPS is excellent. The only potential concern is some susceptibility to invades, but that shouldn't be worse than what any moderate cooldown jungler already has to deal with. Every point that Nico invests into her Q increases its damage by 125 against monsters. Now, you can't just be a power farmer because we've established that Nico doesn't scale as a carry into the endgame, but when a champion clears this quickly and has the tools to play out the other responsibilities of a jungler, there's no way they're a bad jungler. Probably not top tier, do expect to see it though. I anticipate Support Nico being the big winner of this update, as that role optimizes the time you can spend on her new strengths, and the shift towards endgame utility is not bad for a role that emphasizes utility. But since nothing else has changed significantly, we still expect mid lane Nico to be completely functional, we still expect bot lane and top lane Nico to have their niches, we still expect on hit Nico to be a real alternative build for people who enjoy it, we still expect tank support Nico to be legitimate off meta, in fact that one is noticeably stronger with a better ult. While I won't pretend that all of these playstyles are competitively strong, right now, no matter what flavor of Nico you enjoyed, it's still around and it's slightly stronger. She is theoretically a Pentaflex champion. So if the setups haven't fundamentally changed, we'll speed through them for the sake of new Nico players looking to try her out. We still default to a standard QEW skill order, but please keep in mind the option to take W at level 1 in most roles. Jungle Nico will want to take QWQ. Please pause the video if you need to take a closer look at these graphics, but you won't go horribly wrong by defaulting to a preset skill order. To fulfill her new purpose, Mage Nico now heavily favors Hextech Rocket Belt. I felt genuinely naked on the champion when I went back to Ludens. The catch potential of Rocket Belt is so much better if you can withstand the loss of mana. We're still opting into a basic pen tree in most situations, but Zhonya's has increased value on this style of mage. Just try to avoid purchasing it second unless you're a support or if the situation is desperate. All attack speed, utility, and some tank options remain available to the off-meta builds, but these are out of scope for this video. We're still defaulting to an electrocute page because Nico's game plan values immediate snowball potential, and her range makes it difficult to find first strike matchups. Comet remains an option, as does press the attack, aftershock, glacial augment, hail of blades, all dependent on build, role, and playstyle, of course. Going in depth on a champion with so much existing strategy and history is out of scope for this video, and frankly, I do not have the knowledge on every Nico option, but I've included what I can in the graphics. 
So that's the Nico Midscope update. Her tools have been expanded in a way that leaves every existing oddball Nico build intact while also breaking her out of her restrictive competitive niche. I find that impressive. Even though it's difficult to imagine this champion becoming a staple of coordinated play, it's at least nice to see her as a more compelling option, and I can personally vouch for how much fun it is to use her options. If this format worked well, I do intend to continue with shorter form mid-scope update coverage while leaving the full day one format available for new champions and VGUs. So if you have any feedback, I would appreciate it in the comments below. Thank you to my patrons, SonicX5040, Mel7401, and Hailfire. Your continued support makes these videos possible.